Hello, Internet. This is Ben with Not a Mysterious Space Update. So this this month is going to be kind of late on Mysterious, uh, sorry, light on Mysterious Space Updates for a couple reasons. Thanksgiving happened, and at the end of that, I was, then I got sick. Um, actually, so that was, that's what took up all the time. I was like, why did that take up all the time? Because that was at the end of November. But yeah, and I was like just sick for a week and took a bunch of hours off work. Um, the great thing about working at, well, maybe it's great or not. See, if I was if I was working in an office and I was just calling sick and get the whole day off, but since I'm working from home, you know, you can't, like, you can still work, right? But anyway, I wasn't feeling super great. I definitely was not feeling like a program anymore. Um, and Christmas is coming up, and the week before Christmas, I'm going to have, like, some friends over, and it's just a busy, uh, a busy month. Also... I need to finally, and, and this the timing worked out perfectly, so I'm participating in Ludum Dare, but the reason I'm participating in Ludum Dare isn't because I necessarily planned to. Um, what I am doing is making a game, let me actually, let me navigate to the site, safetyfta.gov. So, for work, we have made this site that's loading, sorry, it's taking really late. Look at how boring, oh, federal train, oh my god, there's this guy with, it's so patriotic and, and government. Um, which is fine, it's just like, the, so the website is a training website, um, and so it is every bit as exciting as you might expect a government training website to be. And uh, to be honest, we have done a better job, I think, like, the training videos and the training thing that we put together is at least more entertaining than the super monotone boring thing that, that was given to us by who knows what company that, that put together that training, those training videos. And that was really boring. We made something slightly better. But that's still not saying much. It's really low bar to beat. And I really, I, you know, I, I study game design as a hobby. That, that was not what I studied in school. I just did straight up computer science because there was no such thing as game design when, when I was in college. Um, not as like a, you know, a thing you could study. But I've really become interested in education and games. And I've, I've never really, there's a lot of things that you could combine with games, really cool. In fact, education games is one of them for sure. Um, and 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 I have been interested in it. And I watch videos, and I and I watch extra credits online. And I watch TED talks, and I watch all these things, and I read these things. And when we started doing this this training thing for work, I was like, I can, we can we can do better. We can make this a game. Why don't we make this a game? And I tried to bring up ways a long time ago, like like a year or more ago, of little ways to gamify it. You know give people things for, you know, finishing certain courses, like like give them a thing they can put on a, a profile or something, because people like, like those social things, you know, do something. We've done zero of those things. Um, although, Vice President Guy has shown some interest, you know, and, and I don't know how much of that, to be 100% to be honest, just like, I don't want to shut you down, so I'm going to like play along with everyone's ideas here, you know, or whether or not he is legitimately interested. Um, but we do these, uh, these like, uh, what, what, tech talks every couple weeks at work um, and I was like okay I'm gonna give my tech talk on education and games and um, you know I had to refresh myself and put some things together and, and actually it ended up being it wasn't my turn for the for the tech talk it was instead um, like we didn't have anyone scheduled so me and this other guy kind of half were ready and so we each gave kind of like half a talk but people asked me questions and, and then I was much better talking you know, from my notes, I felt was a failure. But but when people were asking me questions, it's like, aha, I know how to answer these questions. You know, um, but anyway, after all that talking, I was like, at the end, I was like, okay, guys, you know what? I just need to prove it. I need to make a game. So that's what I set out to do. Um, and I knew that was coming. And and I and I knew the talk was going to happen sometime this month. So I, I was leaving time for that. And it just so happened that Ludum Dare um, came up. And I'm really happy it did because that was, I think, the final thing that pushed me into. We're gonna do this, you know, <laughs> doing this thing. So, here is the rail nomenclature game, and I kind of wish I could show you the courses. The course that there's a, a particular course. I don't think it's available right now. Let me take a look. Um, yeah, so you only have. So this is the, like the super boring one. If you, if you you have to sign up, and and I have an account, I could log in, um, and and watch this video. It is the most monotone most boringly presented thing you have ever witnessed, right? Like 100% what you expect out of a government training website, right? Our thing is a little better, but it's, it's real nomenclature and it's not ready. There's still some bugs in the site we're working out. So so that course has not been published. Um, and it is a little better. I, I think Jim, uh, again, the vice president, actually 
he, he went all in on this. He was like, we're going to make this training video good. And and I'm sure that was partly to show off, you know, to he's like, we can we can do this better, you know, than, than other people. Um, and, but I mean, we did, right? I mean, and, and it is more interesting and it is more engaging. We got like a good guy to do the readings. Um, you know, and we got a cool guy, like some, someone to do the animations, which look really good. It, you know, it's all better. But again, it's still just watch a video, answer a quiz, watch a video, answer a quiz. Not very interesting. So, and again, it's about rail nomenclature, which is, you know, vocabulary, whatever. It's, it's, it's like, I mean, you could teach this to sixth graders. Um, and, you know, what is this thing called? What is that thing called? What, you know, where are there more of these types of you know, rail in the big cities or the small cities, and it's all these these boring sorts of things. So, I don't remember. Let's let's it's randomly generated right now. Let's get a better randomly generated palette. And those that guy's legs are like blending in with the floor. There we go. All right. So, <laughs> I'm gonna fix all that. I'll have like a character creation. But here I am walking around. Right. I can walk in front of these trees. I can walk behind them. It uh, whatever. And then we've got left mouse and right mouse, and those, of course, are going to be the only two options. And this happened to work out perfectly. I didn't know what the Ludum Dare, um, you know, uh, themes were going to be, and I'm really happy that two-button controls was one of the options, because that is 100% perfect. Because as a government training thing, I, I have to make sure that, you know, I don't know who's going to be playing. Like, is it, it going to be, like, old dudes, or, or I think I think really it's not going to be, like, really old dudes. I mean, it's going to be... I don't know. I mean, but it might be like management. You know, I, these people might not have much experience playing games, and so the game has to be easy. And so two button controls, that, that is perfect. So that's, I was probably going to do that anyway. Honestly, I, I wouldn't have maybe thought about it so consciously. And it is helpful to have that two buttons. You know, that rule. Um, you know, I knew I wanted it to be probably a hundred percent mouse, with maybe keyboard for entering name or or answering questions or something. So here we are bouncing along, and uh, we can we can look at these people. So. Here's the setting, <laughs> and I'm going to try and keep this video short because this is all I have to show off, right? And I've already spent most of it talking, so there's like 30 seconds of here's what the game looks like. Um, and yeah, talking doesn't work. <laughs> you could talk to yourself. We'll have to fix that, obviously. Um, so this, the setting for the game, I, I wanted... Because we're teaching very sort of mundane, real-life vocabulary, like... You know, when rail intersects with the road, that's a rail grade crossing. How are you going to present that in an exciting setting? We can't do the past because it would make no sense to have those things. And and we could do the present, but that's kind of boring. Like, how am I going to have you out solving puzzles, you know, in, in the real world? I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of adventure games that have done that. Um, but I don't know. For me, that just seems kind of harder to talk about. I would like a, a slightly more fantastic setting. So the setting here, it's not going to be explicitly stated, uh, is that you're in the far future after Yellowstone Park has exploded, destroying the U.S., basically. I was thinking of doing, you know, another big war, um, but that's not only cliche, but I was like, do I want to say that the U.S. was, like, defeated in a war, you know, <laughs> for, for, like, a, for, for a government um, training thing? The Yellowstone Park, if you don't know, that's going to explode. People don't know when. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those geological timescale things, so you're like, soon meaning maybe thousands or tens of thousands or you know hundreds of thousands of years i mean people don't know but yellowstone park is waiting to explode and it's also possible of course that we just completely don't understand how these things work and it will never explode but it's going to blow up and when when it does again it's probably going to blow up and when it does which again could be like hundreds of thousands or, or even more you know i don't fully remember the, the time scale for all i know it's millions um but when it explodes, it's going to be devastating. That'll be like half the U.S. covered in, you know, ash <laughs> and dark skies and really, really super bad. Um, so yay for that old faithful. I'm, I'm glad that's doing something <laughs> for now, um, entertaining people before it explodes and kills us all. So anyway, it'll be a far future. I'm going to have like a huge crater on, on a map. If I ever have a, an excuse to draw a U.S. map, you know, I'll have a, a huge crater there. Um, but so it's the far future, and you are now with some professor, this Professor Red, um, who I want to give red hair. You'll notice my people don't have hair yet, but I'll give uh, him or her. I want to actually leave it ambiguous. Um, I would like to leave everything as, as gender neutral as possible because of, I don't know, personal, I don't know, <laughs> personal preference. Um, you know, what, what, what is that reason? Um, I guess I, I just I, I guess I would say yeah LGBT ally I, I not myself identify as anything other than a straight the straight guy I am, um, but 
but I, I certainly sympathize with, with that cause. So I'll, I'm going to make everything, all the people at least, uh, gen you know, just not even say. Just find a way to work around it. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot of dialogue referring to people as all going to be puzzles, so we can just leave it ambiguous. Um, and that's adva advantageous for the player character because it's whoever you are. You know, are you male, female? It, it doesn't it doesn't need to know or care. It, it's just you. Um, and then whatever you you know project on the on the player is fine, right? So anyway. That's all, all a tangent. That's just like a little, a little sub thing. And, and anyway, um, so where was I even talking? Yes. So you are a student of archaeology, and for like your final project or whatever, you're going to be out here with Professor Red, who is this eccentric professor character. You know, like Journey to the Center of the Earth. And indeed, similar to Journey to the Center of the Earth, you are going to find yourself trapped in the in caverns beneath the surface of the earth but, but not not the center you know it'll be the ruins of, of american cities that you're running around in trying to find uh, an escape but meanwhile this eccentric professor just can you know it's like oh but do, do rail systems what, what is a frog what is a diamond they talk about these things you know and, and and those are you know part of the the rail nomenclature so you'll learn about those things um as you try to escape the the undergrounds of in America destroyed by Yellowstone <laughs> by the Yellowstone uh, what is it that Caldera I think I don't remember um, I'm pulling words anyway so I've been talking super quick and super excitedly I'm a little I'm, I, I'm excited about this I'm excited to finally do this I'm excited to do this for a number of reasons um, one I haven't done one of these little um, challenges in a while these little make a game in you know two or three days uh, I used to do these a lot more for RPG Maker, um, Tag Jam, yeah, that was the one, and, and a couple others of these Make a Game in Two Days. So that's really fun to have, like, a, get to do a new project. I'm also a little excited because this is a uh, some old code. You may recognize from the video I started to talk about this but didn't. Um, I was going to make a procedurally generated dating sim. Where did it Where did it go? Where's my Where's my real? Here it goes. <laughs> I was going to make um. This procedurally generated dating sim, and, and these were the graphics in there. This is the trees and, and everything else. But I put together this engine um, and had all this code for characters keeping track of memories and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it really got to a point where it was just really hard to progress. I, I had coded myself into some corners um, with some very difficult problems to solve <laughs> to move forward. Um, you know, getting characters to keep schedules and move according to those schedules and plan their routes um, and, and establish memories based on this and that and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I've taken all that down, um, stripped it down to just the basic engine, um, which, you know, I, I'll have to look at the Ludum Dare rules, you know, whether or not this technically will qualify because I'm using existing code, I don't know. It's always a weird line for these things when they're like, well, you can use engines, of course, you know, don't don't go engineless, but like, is this an engine engine? Or, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what, where you draw that line um, on this code. But but anyway, I'm, I'm less worried about that if it doesn't... If, if at the end of it I don't feel like it's it's legit, then I just won't submit it to Ludum Dare, but I'll still have made the things, so all right, that's fine. Um, but anyway, and I'm also excited because I finally get to to make a game for work, if you want to, right? I mean, kind of. They're obviously not paying me for this, um, but this is going to be a proof of concept, and it's something that I can present and be like, look, here are some of the things I talked about, you know, during the tech talk. Um, things like difficulty curves and interest curves, and, and uh, there's... All, there's I don't remember all the game design stuff I pulled up, and honestly, I didn't have as much as I wanted, but but here it is applied, and here's how we can make a game and see how this is better, So and see how this is better than watching a video, and I'll just go ahead and spoil the first puzzle here. Um, one of the things that comes up early in the, in the videos is, are there more heavy or light rail systems? And light rail systems are like the passenger trains, and um, God, there's a whole category, I don't remember them all, but you know, funny little... Um, I think these things count. Uh, where like you go up a hill on a rail, and I'm not talking about like ski lifts, but there's there's one in Pennsylvania. I can't remember if that technically counts as rail, but if it does, it would definitely be light. Mono rail systems like going around, you know, Disney World or whatever. Those sorts of things are light rail, and then heavy rail are you know the, the big cargo trucks. Which are there more of? Well, the answer is there's more of the little ones. There's more light rail, um, and then. And, and so the video just tells you these facts, right? And so what I'm going to have happen here instead is, you know, the professor's like, oh, I, I have a theory about light and heavy rail, um, but look around the station and see if you can find anything that, that you know, would support or, or whatever my theory. Um, and, 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 you know, I keep saying he, whatever pronouns. Um, anyway, so the professor's not going to... Uh, tell you what the theory is, and I don't know how much I'll bother having them be like, oh, I don't want to, you know, give you any biases 
or whatever, but you'll go into the station and find a little map, and you'll look at the map, and, you, and you'll have to count them. It'll be a, a real map of a real U.S. city with real, or real U.S. cities with real indicators of how many light rail and heavy rail stations are here. And we have all that data. I can, you know, it's, it's publicly available data, in fact, if you wanted to go to the super boring NTD website or whatever. I'm not even going to pull it up. Um, it looks even worse than, <laughs> again, what you expect from old boring government websites. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I can pull all the data, have real data, show it to you in the map, and then you, the player, will count it, right? It's not just some guy, even if he's got a better voice and there's funny animations, you know, saying, oh, there's more light rail than heavy rail, and most of the heavy rail is in the big cities, you know? It's like, no, here's a map, count it and figure it out yourself. Which is such a better way to learn, right? You make someone solve the problem themselves, and then they really know. And then you'll come back to this professor, and you will tell them the information that you have learned, and... You know, again, teaching someone is is the best way to learn something yourself. Although there's only so far we can get with that in the game, um, so that's that's what it's going to be. You'll you'll solve that puzzle, and then I'm, and then I'm going to have you, and then like a disaster will strike and be trapped underground, and, and you'll have to uh, do without some of the things. So it is the far future. I would love to go totally, you know, transhumanism. Like, you know, we're all uploaded in computers. We all got nanobots in our brains. Like whatever. Um, but but I think I have to to scale back a little bit on that part again. Just thinking of the target audience um, and, and wanting to make this game accessible. I think the fewer crazy things <laughs> I put in the game, the kind of better. Um, so yeah, there will be mostly normal people, but I'll have some funny things. Like I'm going to give you a teleporter for sure. Um, I'll put some some items on the left here, some UI, so you'll have like teleport back to the home base or whatever, and and so that will let you navigate quickly. But Again, then a disaster will strike and, and you won't have access to those things, but um, I'm going to let you switch between the two players, the two characters will be able to control the professor or you, um, and set up little like local teleporters and that will let you solve some little puzzles, you know, almost portal style where it's like, oh, I have to set up a, a teleporter here and a teleporter there and now we can get across, um, but it'll be a little more not as good uh, because because you can't fire right I mean the whole the cool thing about the portal gun was you could fire it to places that, that no one had access to whereas this will be a little different but you have that whole two person uh, two character puzzles and, and we've seen lots of those in games and I'll actually have to go and, and find some more and remind me my, myself of how those worked like uh, Ico comes immediately to mind but in Ico you never really controlled the girl um, and like the reason that there were a lot of puzzles was that she was not as capable as you were, right? And so maybe we could do something the same with the professor. Maybe the professor just isn't as capable as you. That's probably what it's going to have to be, um, and set up some puzzles that way. So yeah, I would like some some light puzzle solving, but again, we can't make it so hard that people can't learn the vocabulary, right? That they're supposed to learn for this boring government information. Um, yeah, I've run out of things to say. Uh, so I hope that this is interesting to anyone. I'll probably share this video with, with co-workers uh, in addition to the rest of the internet. I don't, you know, no, I'm not going to say this. I was going to say, I'm going to tell you what I was going to say, but I'm telling you I'm not going to say it. Um, I was going to say I don't know that anyone else would be interested in this because of the material being learned. But if that is true, then I have failed, right? Like, I need to make the game interesting so that anyone would, you would want to play it, even though you are learning things, right? The learning has to come second. It has to happen, but it can't be the the first thing. I mean, that is what separates a, a learning education game, like number munchers or, or whatever, from like an actual game, but but you learn things, right? I mean, I, I want I want to be on the game side, but I want to teach you. Um, so it should be a game that anyone wants to play. So I'm not going to say that even though I'm posting on YouTube where like mysterious people are watching, you know, mysterious space people are watching. Oh, but you uh, you won't want to play it, player of games. No, you should want to play it. It should be good enough that you want to play, even though you're going to learn real nomenclature, because you'll solve some little puzzles. I mean, you know, it's not going to appeal to as many people, probably. Um, I'm going to try really hard, though, not to have any ham-fisted education in here. Um, it, it's hopefully going to come naturally out of the puzzles. And I have not honestly thought about, you know, I haven't even gone through the whole real nomenclature course taking notes. I've had to go through it to test it, but, you know, I'm not paying much attention or I'm using debugging uh, cheats to, to skip through videos or whatever else. Um, so but I'm going to have to go through it again and take notes on some of these puzzles, and it's possible that I'm going to hit some puzzle, or, or sorry, take some notes on the information in the course, and then think of how to make puzzles 
based on that information. It's possible that I find some of that and just go, I don't know, <laughs> right? Where I'm just like completely stumped by something I have to teach you. Like, I can't think of a way to teach this naturally. And But we'll see. I mean, here's the thing about the Ludum Dare. I've only got two days. Um, and so I'm not going to get through the whole e-learning course anyway, and that's fine. That's not my goal. Um, but I'm going to get as much as I can. Uh, it is, again, a proof of concept. I wouldn't want to spend weeks and weeks and months and months making this thing only to have, you know, where I work, only to have them be like, yeah, well, we'll never do that. You know, the, the proof of concept, fine, but no, I don't like it for whatever reason. So, and then I, then I wouldn't want to have wasted all that time. So it is, again, just a proof of concept. As much as I can get in the time of Ludum Dare is probably as much as I need. Um, I've already got the motion down, honestly, because of the nature of the game. That's like half of it. <laughs> I already have door code um, from the previous engine uh, that I had written for the, the procedural dating sim, so having you move between locations will be fine. And then really I just have to load in a bunch of graphics of like a map and, and show it to you and be like, count this stuff. You know, I'll have to make that map, obviously. Um, but popping up a graphic in a dialogue is not hard. It's the same thing as this. Click to dismiss. Oh, although that's kind of awkward that then you start moving, right? Anyway, many things to solve, but I mean, it's not going to take long to, to add puzzles, I think, so this will be good. I have rambled for quite enough about what is essentially boring government stuff, so thank you for watching if you have watched this far. Um, Mysterious Space updates will come, by the way, if you were watching Hoping for Mysterious Space. I probably should have said something about that sooner. Uh, but I've got some new music from DDR Kirby ISQ. Uh, that I will put in the game, and, and that'll all be released at the end of the month. Possibly sooner, because it wouldn't break save compatibility, so I wouldn't mind releasing it before the end of the month. Um, but we'll see. You know, I mean, it's also possible that I open up the code again and go, oh, I should add this thing, and then save compatibility is broken, then I better wait for the end of the month. So, but anyway, there will be something. Again, it won't be much. I'm working on this. I've got Christmas. I was sick for the first week of November, or sorry, December. Um, so... Not as much this week as other weeks, but it'll be there. There's mysterious space for sure. Anyway, thank you again. I'm going to uh, stop recording and upload this and then resume coding. Maybe after lunch. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs>